We're not speaking of a building that exists as an outcome of a single design process. The existing building we see right now is an outcome of one of three of hundreds of years of innovations and changes since the original church in 1757. This is a place where King Edgar, the first king of England, was crowned and a structure that survived two world wars and a major architecture and religious transformations. It's a beautiful mix of cultures and memories over decades. The way its architecture and structural forms are shaped based on deep meanings that people had and beliefs uh, actually shows how this structure is brilliant architecturally and structurally. What I love the most about the structure is its form and how the materials are used to build such a beautiful structure. The general form of the structure depends on um, heavy and bulky members and in general forms of structures uh, can range from truss structures, cable structures or arch structures, frame structures or even surface structures. Bath Abbey form is a mix of arch structures, uh, arch form and a surface structure. In both of these structures, compression is the main element of attraction. Um, so compression basically is when you have an element and you compress it to, to get the force. O opposing to tension, if you have a cable and try to tense it or pull it, this is a tension force on the cable. So as seen the, from the overall form of the building, the building resists loads by transferring the loads to the ground level. This is usually the case in all buildings. The final point uh, for the destination of loads on a load path is the ground. In this case, loads that are considered are wind and dead load, which are loads from anything on the structure that is part of the structure itself. For example, the slab or the beam or the weight of the secondary elements like uh, um, the cladding or anything that goes on the structure, the glass and all of these elements. And finally, the live load which are the people and the objects that occupy the building and use it. Some buildings are designed to consider earthquake loads as well, yet considering the era at which the abbey was built, the original designers didn't consider such loading. Bulky bus stone materials, uh, which we're going to speak about later, was used to be able to resist these loads. This was quarried locally and transformed from Box, which is a city near Bath, um, uh, and a very important factor that decides what material is used, and in this case it's bath stone from, from box, is the coast of this material. And as well, the way tra of transporting this material and its usage in the, in the structure. So in this case we have a compression structure, we need bulky material that can, can, can take this load. Looking back at history, as the monastery was dissolved, Romans took over from the abbey and took over the abbey and constructed their own building, which is believed to be two-thirds bigger than the existing structure. Bat Abbey is a masonry gothic structure that has undergone several changes over the years and lifetime. The main material used for the abbey, especially for the internal and external walls, are the local oolite limestone, which is also known as bath stone, with the, with the traditional rubble core between the skin. The roof is mainly constru constructed of timber, with the exception of the main part, which is the stone vaulting. The combination of the previously mentioned form and the materials give the abbey its unique form and identity of the perpendicular Gothic architecture, by which like the combination of the low aisles, nave arcades, and the tall calistory gives, gives it with the unique perpendicular character. The use of bath stone as the main building material gives it with this rich golden color. It's believed that having bath stone as the main building material is what initiated the widespread use of the material in the city 
which is the main material for the Georgian architecture style. The interior is also very unique, with four shafted piers carrying the tall calistrolli above four centered arches. This allows a, an, un, an uninterrupted view from the west end to the east end. The abbey was originally constructed in the 14th century. Common with cathedrals, it was constructed from west to east. The walls went up first before the wooden ceilings, hence thicker walls at the main entrance, which was at the west. The, compared to modern construction, this was a safe practice, uh, but although modern construction have improved it in a way, but this can be seen as a safe form of construction in terms of building the walls and before installing the roof system. The structure is characterized with thick walls and robust columns, which helps in the structural stability of the Bar Abbey and also in resistance to imposed loads. Not to dive too deep into history, but the Bar Abbey has undergone major structural changes, but one of the main ones is known for is the it was done between 1864 and 1874. This was the replacement of the original wooden ceilings with stunning stone fan vaulting, which can be seen in the nav. This fan vaulting helped improve the structural stability of the abbey by transferring the loads from the roof, loads and forces from the roof through the ribs of the fan vaultings down to the columns. There are also external fly, fly buttresses which helped transfer the loads from the fan vaultings to the external columns. And the fly buttresses also help with the lateral stability of the structure. The fan vaultings are examples of are examples of thin shell structures. Just to briefly explain what thin shell structures are, they are lightweight curved structures that help that are very good in compression and help transfer weight through the structure and they are thin in section. The main part of the interior is the fan vaulting which is widely acknowledged as being one of the finest in England from this period. The quality of the vaulting throughout the, throughout the roof of the abbey is very significant, as all the exposed faces are well fitted together, giving a smooth, fine appearance. Having such high walls gives the opportunity for a high glazed area, which, which in total is 80%, co compromising 53 windows of, of the wall area. The exterior also has a very consistent and perpendicular form, mainly, mainly marked with the large glazed area previously mentioned. The key part of the exterior is the west front. The remarkable west front has a central curved oak doorway that consists of four centered arches. The west walls of, on the side aisles have a doorway with three centered head and four light window over. It also has a unique detailed crafting. The most significant one is the angels ascending and descending from heaven. The existing heating system consumes a lot of gas and it is neither economically nor environmentally friendly. According to various companies and monitoring reports, especially Bureau Hapa, it has been concluded that the simplest and most economical solution is to replace the existing boilers with the new high efficiency gas fired boilers and replace the existing cast iron pipe work with new galvanized steel finned tube pipe work. But as we all know, the easiest way is not always the best way. This solution will increase efficiency and reliability, but it will not significantly reduce carbon emissions, and that is not what we seek in this day and age. Therefore, other options were, include, uh, were, were investigated, and in my opinion, the most efficient, uh, the most efficient way to, to do this is by a heat pump underfloor heating system, where the natural energy from the Bath Abbey water, the, the Bath Spa water, will be redirected onto the Bath Abbey. Now, uh, the water at the Bath Abbey is about 43 degrees Celsius and for, um, for proper underground heating to happen, 
in this abbey we're going to need around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Therefore, an additional heat source will be needed other than the natural energy which will be utilized from the water coming out of the spring. Many large areas in the abbey are uncomfortable for sitting and for praying for prolonged periods of time due to the high roof where most of the heat rises and the cold air as the cold air gushes from down from the windows, the single glazing windows where all the heat is, is being released. 38% of the heat loss is from these windows, but it's also entering new cold gushes of air and making certain parts very uncomfortable. Now the underfloor heating will help remedy that, but for this to properly work and for the, the air gushes to stop, some kind of screen should be placed where the airflow is interrupted. In terms of lighting, the abbey has huge windows, but still at some days it can be very gloomy in here and not enough lighting to um, properly, properly function as a, as a cathedral. Currently there's house light lighting installs, which, is, which gives levels, light levels that are way below what is needed and what is recommended for such buildings. Especially on the aisles, the lighting is very low, therefore artificial lighting with more illuminance will be required to fulfill this building environmentally.